They pulled me in three games before the end of the under-16 season and said, you've got three games to prove it as it stands now, we're not going to take you on. In the week leading up to it, I played for my school and I tore my hamstring. And I never told anyone because I wanted to play in this game. I scored a hat-trick in about 35 minutes. I went down with my hamstring, which was already gone. And I went down, they took me off and I signed straight after the game. And we had a car crash on the way up, quite a bad one as well. So my shins just exploded basically. I said I'd had a bike accident on my bike when I broke my arm and had a compound fracture. Bones come out the side of my arm, but I was actually playing for um, heel her lanishan. Well, I shouldn't have been. I lied at the time because I thought they were going to kick me out if I told the truth. Between the injuries, the homesickness and having a child, it was like I wanted to come home. It was as simple as I, that I'd had enough. Giza Haigato, welcome to Engage. Cheers, David. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me on. Now, absolutely my pleasure. Now, I think that this conversation has been some 25 years in the making. Probably not from your angle, but certainly from, from my perspective. It's, it's been a, a conversation yeah. that, that, uh, that I've wanted to have for, for quite some time. Uh, just to give some background into that, uh, 25 years ago, it was Tuesday, February the 18th, 1997. Oh no, actually that was the, the date that the report was published, so it would have been the, the Saturday, a uh, few days before yeah. that. Um, you were playing on one of the, the pitches on Man Away in Cardiff, I believe it was the, the Cardiff Schools uh, Cup game in the ESFA Fujifilm Trophy, uh, Cardiff Schools against Gosport. And I was on work experience at the South Wales Echo, doing a week's work experience. I was 16 years old at the time. And I was tasked with covering this football match in the, in the, um, in, in the cup competition. And you were playing in that game. And Cardiff schools ran out 5-0 winners. And uh, I, I didn't realize it at the time but yourself and certain other players who, who were playing in that team as well all went on to you know to some you know some pretty good things you know you you ended up playing uh, professionally at Chelsea at Cardiff you've played uh, for teams in um, the Welsh League and you were also the youngest ever football club chairman or Welsh football club chairman uh, when you uh, were the chairman of uh, STM Sports so a lot has happened, I think, over the past 25 years. And it does seem that you, you've spent pretty much your entire life in some way, shape or form involved in the game. So that, that's what I wanted to have you on uh, the show today for, was to, to just talk about your experiences over the past quarter of a century in the game, which I'm sure makes you feel old. <laughs> so, yeah. so it certainly does for me as well. Think, thinking back to, to that game 25 years ago, it seems... In some ways, it doesn't seem that long ago, but in other ways, it, it seems like a lifetime ago. So uh, I'm, I'm sure we'll have uh, we'll have plenty to talk about today. But before we we get to that that game, which I I covered while on work experience, if you could just um, tell us a, a bit about uh, yourself and uh, you know where you grew up and and all that kind of thing. So I grew up in a um, on an estate called Trowbridge Green, which sort of splits St Melons and Rumney. Um, I think it was an estate they sort of threw up during the war just to house people. Uh, people locally used to call them Kellogg conflict boxes because they were prefabbed houses. But um, yeah, great great place to go up. Whilst it was a tough estate, it was a great place. It was um, lo lots of um, lots of good times growing up. Fo football, cricket, mainly sport related. Um, a bit of fishing, check a bit of fishing in there and. Uh, yeah, it was a great, 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 great place to grow up. Um, I know that area gets a lot of bad press, but to be fair, I, 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 you know, I, I suppose if you're living in it, you don't notice it as much. But great people, great, great sort of community, all looking out for each other. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, a, it was. I had a decent childhood, if, if, if I'm being honest. And were you always into football or other sports, and even from a, a very young age? Football, always football first, yeah, just playing out on the green and over the local park and we used to, summer holidays were spent, we'd get 22, 25 of us together, ranging from 
six years of age up to probably, you know, the, the parents, and we'd always have 11 aside and over what was known as Tesco Fields, um, behind behind the Tescos in St. Melons. Um, and we'd be over for hours and hours and hours, you know, and I, I talk to my kids now because they, they it, does, it doesn't seem to happen so much now. And they used to say, how did you know when to come in? I said, when it got dark. I had to be in when it got dark. Yeah, are you about the same sort of age as me or, or perhaps a year or so younger. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I can completely uh, appreciate that as well. It, it's amazing to think now how, you know, we, we used to do all of that type of thing when we were kids, whereas now you got, the kids have got the mobile phones. We got we're tracking them on the phones and everything to to know exactly where they are at at any particular moment. And and we never we never had any of that. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of social media. If I'm being, I haven't been on social media personally for probably six seven years now. No no, no other reason other than I was spending too much time on it. Um, and I haven't missed it at all. Um, but I understand the importance of social media. But for me, um, I'm quite happy. Maybe I'm a bit old and. <laughs> Hold before my years, I don't know, but it's, it's just it's it's maybe it's because I grew up without it. Yeah, I, I think social media can be quite useful from a, a business perspective, but uh, there's certainly I think a lot to be said as well for just living a a quiet life away from social media without having to to share every single you know facet of of your life, which um, which I suppose kids today are, are just growing up doing. Uh, yeah, they used to. For yourself as well, then, did you come from a, a sporting family overall? Any brothers or sisters who were involved in sport? Well, I'm, I'm the oldest of six children, so um, I've got three brothers and two sisters. Um, my dad was reasonably fit and healthy. I think he, I remember watching him play football. Um, he was also into boxing a little bit, nothing of any sort of level, but he, he, he was fit. But I was mainly um, brought up by my grandparents. So my dad's mum and dad, and my granddad was in. He, he was into judo, but not. He never really played football, but he spent forty years watching it, so he had a good idea. And to be fair, without him, I would never have sort of. He, he literally drove me any anywhere and everywhere, and I include up, you know, as I got older with the Cardiff school stuff, all around the UK. So without him, he unfortunately passed away just over a year ago. So that was, um, yeah, it's it's. I don't think we had anyone outstanding in our family at football, no. My, my other granddad, so my mum's side, he played for the RAF and and uh, he, he, he knew football, but I don't think there was anyone that sort of excelled other than local football. So where do you think the, the talent came from then? Was it just something that was natural to you or, or was it something that you, you really worked at when you were a kid? I, I worked hard at it every day. Like you say, we lived a, lived a simple life. There wasn't much money floating around in... In, in our family and, and in a, so we you know we had a football and a pair of football boots and we spent six weeks over the field kicking the ball around the odd, the odd game of cricket and the odd fishing down the local lake but it was spent um, football. I, I've always understood football if I'm being honest I've always liked you know the, the tactical side of it the positions and what makes people tick I've, I've always enjoyed that and um, like I say probably growing up I was a bit of a Liverpool fan but that was because of Ian Rush you know, in the eight, we grew up in the eighties, and Ian Rush was at Liverpool in the eighties. So, being Welsh, sort of followed Liverpool, but Cardiff City through and through as well. Uh, that's that's good to hear as well. So, you uh, did you always fancy yourself as a striker initially? Then, if you admired Ian Rush growing up, well, um, I, I, tend, I did score a lot of goals. I played for Kykestel Youth Club, which was attached to Rumney High School, and then Saint Melons, um, and uh, yeah, I always scored. Scored a lot of goals, but more from midfield, if I'm being honest. I was never an out-and-out -out striker. Uh, maybe, I, 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 I guess from now, they call it a number 10, don't they? So I want uh, someone who maybe dropped into midfield and tried to make things happen. But um, a lot of good footballers around um, who never went on to do things, you know. Um, in that, I'm trying to think, Craig Bellamy lived on the same estate as us, um, just up the road. So he's probably the most famous person, sort of, from our area that went on to achieve, well, Craig achieved everything almost, didn't he? Um, so we kind of looked up to Craig, although, although um, he was two or three years older than me, I think. Um, yeah, so it, it was driven by myself, if I'm being honest. I just wanted to be a good, I suppose it's an obsession. It was a bit of an obsession. I, 
you know, I wanted, I was a winner. I always liked to win. Horrendously sore loser, if I'm being honest. What to the point of tears and things like that. But um, yeah, just I just wanted to to be the best I could be. Did you ever know Craig Bellamy growing up? Then, if if he sort of lived on the the same um, state as yourself, yeah, he done the same state. I wouldn't say we were best mates or anything. Um, really respected what Craig did and kind of looked up to him because he was a couple of years older than me. There was some other people, Andrew Evans, who went on to to. Um, not really fulfil his potential, but fantastically gifted uh, footballer. And um, Leon Jan was in the same team as us. So Leon would be a year older. Dale Gardner, and Neil Brett. There was, you know, there was lots of players that sort of never went on. That in my eyes had the ability to, you know. And we pushed each other. We, you know, it was, it was. We really pushed each other, and we played, and we wanted to win. Yeah. Why, why do you think then that? Perhaps it certainly sounds like it was a bit of a, a hotbed of talent then where you grew up. Why, why do you think then that some of those players never really kicked on to their full potential? Well, football's a game of opinions, isn't it? Just because someone, someone's opinion says you're not as good, you know, someone, someone else's opinion says you're good. And I was lucky that I was pushed from a young age by the school teachers, um, Kevin Hart... Uh, Mr Hart as I knew him, Kevin uh, he pushed me to go to Cardiff schools, um, Mr Dudley Jones at Rumney High School um, pushed me, John Tolbert who went, he, he was a massive influence on me, John really respected, even till now like, you know, he's like, he was a Cardiff schools manager and um, I guess I went to a trial, I can remember at Quarter Alla Primary School I was the only one from Rumney High there was um, uh, Whitchurch High, you know, some of the bigger schools, Lanishan High, uh, the, the Ely schools there, and I, don't, I forget what they're called, maybe Glenderu and schools like that. Um, and I, I just I just loved the challenge. It was like, you know, I, I, I wanted to make my granddad proud as well. I was driven by the fact my granddad put so much into me in terms of dropping me here, there and everywhere. I didn't want, I was fearful of letting him down. And it wasn't a fear as in he was going to go nuts with me or shout at me or anything like that. It was a fear that this man had put so much effort into me, I felt it would be, almost be disrespectful not to try. And, th- and that was still even after I finished playing football full-time, and w- even when I started my business seven years ago, it was always that sort of mentality that he sort of instilled in me to be the best I can be. I'm not... Listen, there's always someone better, isn't there? That's, that's a fact of life. But if I, could, if I could just be the best I could be, then I could... Not be happy with that, couldn't I? Yeah, because I suppose at least then you can look look yourself in the mirror and, and think, well, I gave it everything. I couldn't have done any more. It's not just yourself now, who's you know who who's uh, played football now. Both of your your sons as well. Your younger son played in the final yeah. uh, a few days ago. Well, yeah, on Saturday, unfortunately, he lost two one. But um, it, one thing with Luca, he leaves it all on the pitch. What he lacks in maybe ability. He, he absolutely leaves 120% on the pitch. And that, that it, it's a great, great, uh, I think it's a great attribute to have in life, like, you know, in life, not just football, if you're prepared to work that hard, you know, and he, he, he's, he, he, he really did on Saturday leave it all in there. He had a tough week, actually. So they played the Cardiff Cup final on Tuesday and lost on penalties. On Thursday, he was released by Newport County. <laughs> And then he lost the cup final, but he took it all on the chin, and I'm quite proud of him for that because it, it would ruin. You know, I can see how how um, it, it could really affect kids, and I don't think Newport County paid themselves in glory the way they handled it, but that's another thing. But again, I respect their decision. Football's about opinions. And how old is he then at, at the moment? He's 14. Yeah, well, my eldest son Callum's 22 now. He's left home. Um, he was a fantastic footballer, Callum. All the ability in the world. Um, again, really proud of him. So I had Callum. Callum was born when I was 18. So um, there's exactly 18 years to the day that I played for Wales under 18s and he played for Wales schools under 18s. So that was a really proud moment. We both got our caps and shirts framed in the living room on the wall next to each other. Exactly 18 years. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That you both got to that level and you played 18 years apart. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. <laughs> oh, really proud, unbelievable moment, and 
he's a great kid, Callum. He's a fan. Both my kids, you know, you you do rose tinted glasses, but Callum is a, he's a he's a, fant- a fantastic kid. Proud proud of what he's doing now. Moved to London, getting on with his life, and just like most parents, really proud of my children. Um, just want them to be again like I was, the best they can be. If the best they can be is playing tiddly winks for Witchurch High School, then so be it. As long as they're happy. And is that something that you've tried to instill into them then, based on your own experiences? I guess I learned from Callum. Callum came first. I was probably a bit tough on Callum at times, um, but Luke has definitely benefited from Callum's experiences as me as a parent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Fantastic. Okay, so I do want to talk about the the, the game that that I covered all, all of those years ago, um, first of all, and then the, the path that that sort of led, uh, led you on. I, I still think about that, that game from, from time to time, uh, perhaps a bit more so over the last few weeks since we connected on, on LinkedIn. The Wales team, at the, not the Wales team, the, the Cardiff team at the time had three under-15 Welsh internationals. Um, were, were you what, one of those? Yeah, I was, I was fortunate enough to play in what they call the Victory Shield, so that's the one where they put you on Sky TV um, and you play against England, Scotland, and I think Republic of Ireland. Um, we played England at um, Ninian Park, funny enough, and we lost 5-2. We had a tough, tough day that day. Joe Cole and Michael Carrick were in midfield for England. Um, so that was, that was tough. But yeah, I think Rodri Jones was the other one. Um, and I can't remember, maybe in Jermaine Easter or Matthew Higginson, uh, to a team full, again, team full of talent, you know, like really, really good players. Jermaine went on to have a fantastic career. Um, Rodri, unfortunately, um, had, had some bad knees, so he had to, had to retire. Um, but you go for the team, Matthew Bibby, all winners as well, you know, people who hated losing, and Joe Finlayson, there was fantastic. Um, and we had a mentality instilled in us by John Tobert, that you know, we, we, we everyone loved John. You know, he was probably I don't know, don't want to upset him, but I guess he was maybe in his fifties. Um, certainly, but John John was a fair man, very fair but tough, and that tra- that that sort of come through on the pitch. We loved him. Everyone loved John, and we played for John. And there was, you know, there was a a great harmony between everyone there. Everyone knew it, and. I think if I think we went on to win the Welsh Cup final that year in Flint, we beat them four nil, and four or five nil, and it was played in Montgomeryshire. I'm sure it was that year that we won the cup, and that's funny enough. That's where I was picked up, picked up by uh, Chelsea, was via Cardiff Schools. As most of the lads were picked up, Rodri was Man United, Jermaine I think was Wolves, um, Matthew Higginson, Cardiff City, Crystal Palace had a presence. So um, yeah. It, it, it was, I suppose it was easy for a scout if you turn up and watch us versus Swansea. There was 22 very talented kids on the pitch. And, yeah, so I ended up going to Chelsea. Yeah, I, with regards to, to John um, Tobert as well, I, I'm sure he was, he was still involved until quite recently. I'm, I'm sure I, I, I'm not sure how many years ago it was, but I remember reading in the Echo there was a, a football report, um, again, uh, schools schools age and, and he was managing then so I, i'm not sure if he's if he's still involved now but he he was up until fairly recently yeah he he um he was so he coached luca was down cardiff city from seven to nine years of age and john was coaching him then and luca's 14 now and i think cardiff city did a big piece on john um because he because he was a school teacher he also helped run their educational side of things in the academy but I think he retired from all that. I want to say within the last three or four years. Yeah, I don't think it was. It, it, it certainly won ten years ago or anything like that. But John, John was a cracking fella. He lived by, lived it, lived as well in Trowbridge Green. Believe it or not, um, I think it was Glen uh, Menai Way, not far from Craig Bellamy on the same street as Craig Bellamy, if I remember rightly. You mentioned to me uh, previously before we started recording that um, talk about that that school's cup final and um, you beat Flint 4-0 and you said you scored a, a hat-trick in that yeah. final. Was that a, ha- a hat-trick from midfield as opposed to, to playing up front? I, 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 certainly attacker. I don't, I don't think I was a striker. It was a lad that played up front, Lee Evans. He went to Stockport. Um, but um, I, I know I scored a hat-trick because that's the day Chelsea um, sort of 
sort of invited me for a trial. So I can remember that day, yeah. Uh, Did they have a, a scout there at the game? Yeah. South Wales chap called Roger Skirm. I, I, I still... Um, I'm not sure if Roger... I'm not sure, I don't want to say if he passed away or not, but if he did, it was very recently. But Roger moved to the Gower as well when he retired. He was a school teacher, Roger. Another cracking old school, fair bloke. You know, fair, really fair chap. And um, he sent me up to Chelsea. Yeah, he got me the trial, yeah. So what was that trial at, at Chelsea like then? Was it over a period of a few days or how did that work? So it was an eventful first trial. So we were supposed to go up on the Sunday to play Sunday morning up near Heathrow, a place called Harlington, where I think Q Queen's Park Rangers use it as their training ground now. Um, and um, my granddad surprisingly took me up. Um, and we had a car crash on the way up, quite a bad one as well. Um, and he, he still managed to get me to the ground and play. But... It was half term, so I was going to go up on the Sunday play, and then stay up for half term and go home the following weekend. And I don't know. Uh, I went up there. I played. Um, I think I did okay. I don't think I pulled up any trees, if I'm being honest. Uh, and then they sent me home because I was ill on the Tuesday. It must have been the car crash or, or I, I I don't know, but I was really ill, like violently ill. So my granddad had to come up and pick me up and. I can remember going home, I think I was 14 at the time, and really upset, saying they're never going to they're never gonna invite me back, I've made, I've, you know, I'm cocked up, blah, 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 blah. And um, my granddad just said, oh, they'll be in touch, they'll be in touch, and um, they said they'd be in touch, and they, they did, they phoned pretty much a couple of days later, asked how I was, and would I like to come up, come up for the for the game, the follow, it, was, it wasn't the following weekend, it was the following weekend, so... Yeah, and then it went from there. I, I did, I did, I must have done well because they signed me on schoolboy forms from 14 to 16. So I wasn't, you couldn't train because obviously I lived two hours away, but I was going up every Sunday and playing. So I trained with Cardiff schools, trained with my local club, Castello, St. Helens, and then go up there. Like most of the lads in Cardiff schools did, they some at Crystal Palace, some at Wolves, some at Man United. So they, we were all on a similar pathway, I guess, just with different clubs. And uh, I had a bad, bad injury. I did. I, I can say it now because it's nothing to do with me. But at the time, I lied. I, I said I'd had a bike accident on my bike. I broke my arm and had a compound fracture. Bones come out the side of my arm. But um, I was actually playing for um, heel her Lanishan. Well, I shouldn't have been. And they were short of players, and I broke. And it was on um, uh, Sloper Road outside Indian Park, and. Uh, Pretty innocuous thing, slipped and arm underneath me and the bones popped out. And I had to, I, 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 I'm not proud to say it because I don't like lying, but I lied at the time because I thought they were going to kick me out if I told the truth. Uh, so yeah, I, I told them that I'd done it in a, in a bike accident. I'm not sure if they knew the truth or not, but um, they didn't kick me out anyway, I was, I was sure. That's just typical bad luck though, isn't it? You just playing a, a game but you think oh I'll, I'll be all right no, nothing's going to happen nobody's ever going to know and you end up yeah end up breaking your arm <laughs> yeah just and it was a bad break as well i had um pins and plates put in there so uh, it wasn't like a six-week job it was like a four or five months of no football wow um, so i missed pretty much most of the season that i originally signed so you went up uh well it was 1997 that you went up uh, rude hullet was in charge of, of Chelsea at the time, yeah. the, the the sexy sexy football era. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you ever you know get to, get to train or anything like that with any members of the first team or or the reserves or? If you take it back a year, so the year they were giving out apprentices, as they were called then, they weren't called scholarships now they are today. Um, I missed a load of that season as well because I broke my I broke a bone in my foot. So I'd been there two years and probably had six, seven months out. And, you know, that's a lot of time. And so uh, whilst I did, I was doing okay, I was always sort of ch chasing the eight ball, if you know. I was always playing catch-up. And then uh, they pulled me in three games before the end of the under-16 season and said, literally, you literally got three games to prove it. As it stands now, we're not going to take you on. And I think, oh, I, you know, you can imagine what it's like to a 16-year-old or 15-year-old, I think I might be who all he ever wanted to do was, was uh, all I wanted to do was sign for Chelsea. I had offers from loads of other clubs and I don't know, Chelsea just seemed right. Just I just loved it there, I really enjoyed it. 
and I didn't do too well in the first game. I got a little bit better in the second game, but the, th the third game was against Wimbledon, and I can remember it. And they were a big, strong, physical side, and I was I was really small and slight, and I, I did struggle physically when I first started playing in that sort of academy. It was really, really physical, and I'm not ashamed to say I was I wasn't the most physical of players. Whilst I didn't mind getting stuck in, I wasn't you know big or strong. And in the week leading up to it, I played for my school and I tore my hamstring. And I never told anyone because I wanted to play in this game. And I played in this game and I scored a hat-trick in about 35 minutes. And I went down with my hamstring, which was already gone. And I went down, they took me off and I signed straight after the game. <laughs> They'd seen enough, but I, it's, it's like every time I sort of I was never 100% fit, and then when I got taken on as a scholarship, and then you move up there then, don't you? You know, that's a big thing, you move. I've been mothered by my nan and granddad all my life, literally never done a thing to moving up there. It was, it wasn't, it was a bit, I mean, I'd been away with Wales under 15s and 16s, and it's like for a week here and a couple of days there, but now all of a sudden I was living in digs with a family I didn't know. And that, that was, that was strange. I remember my, my nan and granddad dropping me off, and I could never see my granddad cry, and he was crying. I said, what are you crying for? He said, nothing, nothing, and just got back in the car. <laughs> I was like, that was, a bit, that was a bit strange. I'd never seen him cry before. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was good, but I was really excited. I was like, you know, this is... I, st I really believed this was the start of sort of a big career. And going back to the original question, did I train in the first team? Yeah, I was... I, the first pre-season, pre I was flying. I was really... I was, like, one of the fittest. I was doing really well. Um, trained... I wouldn't say with the first team properly, but you know you have the odd game of five side and things like that. Um, played reserve team football now and then, but um, and then about three, four months into that season, I had shin splints, so my shins just exploded basically. Um, went and had operations, had operations on them. Come back, they went again, and that was the beginning and the end. If I'm being honest, David, I just couldn't get fit. Um, and then that led to homesickness, and I had my son when I was 18, and my dad, my real dad wasn't much of a dad to me growing up, so it was like, I always want, I always sort of in my head, I wanted to be, not at 18, mind, but if I was going to, you know, I wanted my, I had to look after my son, you know, that was, and I, I, I literally, between the injuries, the homesickness, and having a child, it was like, I wanted to come home, it was as simple as I, that I'd had enough. And by that time, I think Viali had taken over from Rude Hullet. Um, he said he didn't want me to leave because he, he thought I could really do something. And so he got me a loan move to Cardiff City just to get fit. And I ended up playing in the reserves at Cardiff City. I didn't play first team football. And my shins went again. <laughs> so that was the end of the first season. I went back pre-season the following season which would have been my second year so I'd have been 17 my son hadn't been born then um, and then he was born I went down to Cardiff had that sort of month two months went back to Chelsea tried to do it I, I just I suppose not given up but mentally I, I'd given up I, I, I wanted to be home um, which is crazy to say that it, you know it's funny that you always say what if you knew then what you know now it, it's hindsight to that but uh, I, I just wanted to go home, so Viali got me. Ch Chelsea took over my con um, Cardiff City took over my contract, but I, I was finished by then. If I'm being honest, I, I was fit, f fitness wise, I, I'd gone. My shins, I could never get fit. Yeah, it sounds like you were really unlucky with with injuries over the years. Yeah, but I don't I, listen. I, 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 I don't dwell on things like that. I had, I experienced. A lot more than 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 most will ever experience in football. So I'm grateful for that. I played for Wales under 18s and um, played for, against Spain and you know trips of trips abroad and, and things like that. So I was grateful for what I had. I t I've always been pretty good at not dwelling on the past. If I'm being honest, I've been I've been pretty good again. Well, I had no choice. I had an 18 year old. I had to get on with it. You know, you had to get a job at the time. I'd I'd just bought my first house, two two bedroom house. I can remember. 64 950 over in St Melons on a on a on a newish estate and I had a mortgage of 180 pounds a month and I was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So I had to work. I had no to work. I'd love to have a mortgage of one hundred and eighty pounds a month now. That that would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but to, just just to go back um, a, a step to your time at Chelsea, there I, I did read online somewhere that you had uh, quite a, a famous roommate uh, when when you were there. Uh, were you rooming with John Terry? On and off, yeah. So John was in the same. So we moved digs to a lady called Mo. Um, and she had three of us in a in a house, and John was one of them for a period of time, yeah. And then the other one was a keeper called Paul Nicholas, and another keeper called Rhys Evans. And Rhys Rhys was um, from Swindon. He played for England. John obviously went on to have a fantastic career, and Paul knocked around like I did, probably in the semi-pro sort of amateur level. But um, yeah, on and off, I lived with John before I moved to Chelsea, and. And then on and off for a year when I was there, yeah. So John was in our youth team. He was obviously excelled. Could you tell at that time that he was going to go on to have the, the career that that he was going to have? 100%. 100%, yeah. He was a winner. He was he was a real winner. He, didn't, he trained the first team all the time. And he didn't give two cahoots about booting one of them. And, and yeah, John, John was a winner. Um, and I know he's had some bad press over the years, but to me, John was great. You know, he was um, he was the life and soul of the dressing room. Uh, typical, typical sort of East End boy, really. Uh, but he was good as gold to me. Looked after me when he could, and and uh, quickly moved on from youth and reserve team football. As you as you know, his career speaks for itself, doesn't it? Yeah, he he moved on. I, I suppose by the time he was about eighteen, I think he was playing. Playing first team football, wasn't he? So he... Yeah, yeah, with um, another good player, Jody Morris. Fantastic, one of the most technically gifted players I've I've probably ever come across. Um, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, with jo- Jody Morris as well. I always remember the, uh, the the press reports at the time that that he was linked with Cardiff City as well at, at one stage, but he he turned us down to. To join Leeds, <laughs> I, rem- I remember yeah, that. That's right. Time, yeah. That's right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good times, good memories. Just, just talking about them now brings up, you know, just little, little thoughts. And like I say, I, I, I experienced more than most people will experience in their life, and I was grateful for that. I never thought, I never looked at my injuries as bad luck. I never, obviously, it is bad luck. Any injury is bad luck, really. But I never looked at it on on that. But I never had time, if I'm being honest. I had I had a child at, at sorry, I had a child at eighteen. So it was like, I, I, you know, before I knew it, I was thirty. <laughs> so it was like, I don't, I, listen, I wouldn't, I wouldn't advise anyone having a child at eighteen. But it was the, the best mistake I ever made. In in hindsight, I got a fantastic relationship with my eldest son, and and um, he made me grow up pretty quickly. You know, it was. Fantastic, and I, I enjoyed being a dad. I really did. I really did. Even at a young age, I really, really enjoyed being it, taking him to football, and and uh, but I had a great role model in my granddad, who was who put ev- put everyone first, and my grandmother. So I kind of learned you know, from from them, and yeah, I, look, like I said, I wouldn't advise it, but it was the best mistake I ever made. And given that you were eighteen, you'd become a dad. You'd had a series of injuries up until this point. Do you think then that you would have been able to have played full-time football or do you think by that stage the injuries become too much and you were only ever going to be able to play perhaps at more of a part-time level? I think I, think I could. I think I could have, but sports science and physiotherapy 25 years ago isn't wasn't what it is today, is it? You know, people, shin splints is probably a minor injury nowadays. They can manage it. There's probably, you know, but I literally couldn't run. It was like having hot knives stuck in your shins. Um, so I, I definitely, I definitely had the ability to play full full time football. There's not, you know, and I, I'm not, I'm not one that sort of bigs myself up. I'd probably go the other way. But if you spoke to most people, I'd like to think that I had the ability to do it. But that is all hearsay, isn't it? You know, I, I didn't, and that's 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 life. So when you'd left Cardiff, did you have any offers from any other teams to, to go and join uh, them? Or? Not full-time teams, if I'm being honest. No, not full-time teams. Uh, I didn't push it. I didn't have an agent. So, 
you know, if you have an agent, they do all that running around for you. Um, but no, I ended up playing for Paul Talbot in the Welsh Premier League for six games at the end of the season. And um, we stayed up on the last day. And, and that was um, that was an eye-opener for sure. Training on a sandy astro turf in Athenlido on a Tuesday and Thursday night and um, probably not taking fitness as serious as I should have. Um, but I found that level easy. I didn't, it, it didn't, uh, it didn't, yeah, it didn't push me to to be to be super fit. If I'm being honest, I got by being half fit, which is quite embarrassing to say now. But um, but I suppose if you you're at that level, then you just adapt to that level. So if if you didn't need to be at full fitness, and you could still perform, you know, to to that level or, or better than than the other players on the team. Yeah, then. I, I didn't. Um, I didn't. I didn't enjoy the travelling. We were playing Rill and Bangor and Oswestry and TNS as they were then Welshpool, Kaya Seuss. I didn't enjoy leaving my house at five, five, six o'clock on a Saturday and getting back three o'clock in the morning. Um, and then I, I had the offer to go and play for Ponte Dowi, um, who come and watch me. But they only were Welsh league, so everything was South Wales. And they would pay, believe it or not, I dropped down a level and they were paying me a lot more money. I didn't really have a good job because I didn't have no GCSEs or A-levels or degrees. I was just plodding along selling car and home insurance in a call centre. So it was topping up, topping up my wages, the football on a Saturday. So I did probably chase the money for four or five years, if I'm being honest, because it made a difference to my life at the time. You know, it paid for the going out on a Saturday night, it paid for your annual holiday, things like that. So yeah, I, 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 that's how I ended up in Welsh League, and then I knocked around for till I was probably 27, 28, and then I joined STM Sports, which was pretty much in the amateur league, which was three or four, maybe five levels below what I was playing at the time. Yeah. So S, so STM Sports then, they they were an an existing team when you when you joined them. Yeah, so I, they'd been going, I think, two or three years. So the, the year I joined them, they just got out of the Parks Football Cardiff combination, if you like. Um, and we were in the Amateur League Division 2. So you've got the Division 2, Division 1. I think there was a Premier Division and then Welsh League Division 3. I think that's how it was. And we literally went straight through those leagues, one one after another. We had. Um, it's funny because I played with my brother, Christopher, who's, who's a good player. Um, Dale Gardner, who I mentioned earlier, who was a very good player as a kid. Um, and we all sort of come back to, to our roots, if you like. And it was like playing for Rumney High School, sort of 15 years later, if you like. It was, um, and we, we just stayed. I was with STM for 10 years, yeah, 10 years. And we, we just went through the leagues. Like, you know, I think we had 11 promotions in 14 years or something. And we ended up in... Uh, what's known as the Cymru South now, which was the old Welsh League Division 1, one below b- the b- um, Cymru, Prem- Cymru Premier, you know, where TNS and all that are now. And um, we got to the cup final. Uh, we played Connors Key in the cup final, and that was our last, I think that was pretty much our last game, I think, uh, one of our last games as a club. Yeah, so how do you think then that, or what made that team so good then, that they went through basically the parks football and all the way through the various divisions good good all good local players all mates or friends uh, socialized together it was a real good team camaraderie um yeah it was really that that started and and, and some really talented footballers as well you know some really talent all, all of us could have been playing four or five leagues higher but it was like we just all come back and it was just, it, it sort of happened really 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 quickly and before we knew it in the Welsh League <laughs> and then you know we, we, don't get me wrong we added some players from outside the area over the years but it was um, it was it was we played football the right way it was very much you know pass and move it was it was it was really enjoyable to play in um, yeah it just went for the league it was, it, it'll never be done again no way will that ever be done again no way. You've got the challenges with facilities now and things like that as well. Yeah, so where did your involvement then as, as chairman come into that? 
that came in when we got into the Welsh League. So this chap called Nigel Bertram was was set up the club with a chap called Neil Grant. Well, Neil had departed a few years before, and Nigel was pretty much running the club on his own, putting some money in just to keep it going because uh, we didn't have our own ground. We rented the ground down the Lanrami Lam- Uni, and um, I came in and just basically to help Nigel. That's how it started. It was literally, look, Nigel, you can't do everything on your own. Let's let's um, Let's, let's, let's have a go. And it was really to help him raise money and try and be self-sufficient. And what, We didn't pay players, so what we always tried to do was make sure the players had everything. So they didn't pay their bookings. They had the best kit. It was always not kit. They had the best faci- local facility. And we looked after them that way. Bought them a beer after the game and then... Um, yeah, went, and, and, and it went from there. That, that was, that, it was really a loose agreement. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we're in the Cymru South or the old Welsh League Division well we did have a year in the Cymru South I think um, and then it, it all got too much for the two of us you, you need five, six, seven people carrying out various tasks and we were let down on the ground by the council and, and things like that and players started leaving so we decided to bow out on a high really and the club folded I think that was just before the pandemic yeah, yeah, I I did want to ask you about that as well because uh, the season before you went into the Cymru South, there was uh, there was some issue with getting the a, a tier two license. Uh, what what was the issue with that? Um, just our ground. We didn't have enough seats, so which is crazy, just crazy. But I, I'm all for improving the stadiums and all that because you know you get more people, more people, more money. More money means. Better players, better players means a better standard. I get what the Welsh FA were trying to do. I really did. What we did, um, but because we didn't own the ground, we couldn't. We couldn't just go and take down the fence because it wasn't our fence. It was the uni's fence. So the uni, who were really supportive, and the FAW at the time, um, were supportive. Um, we literally got we got failed originally because there was 99 seats and we needed 100. You know, so we had to bolt one seat in. So if you ever go down there and look in the stand, there's 99 green seats and one red one. So uh, we bolted a seat in and, and look, we got in by hook or by crook. We 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 literally just just by the skin of our teeth got in. But me and Nigel made a promise to the players that we would never stop them from going up on a facility. So me and Nigel moved heaven and earth financially and, and lots of meetings and things like that to do it. And I'm proud to say we did it, you know, we did it. And um, yeah, we did it, we did it. And it was a really proud moment for a, a team, a local team to be playing in the second tier of English, uh, Welsh football. Yeah, it, it's crazy that, that for the sake of one seat, that you would be denied the opportunity to play in, in the second tier of, of Welsh football. There was various other things like emergency lighting, but we, you know, it wasn't just the one seat, but that's what it was in the end, if you like. It was all about one seat, and listen, the rules are rules. I've got no problem sticking to the rules. That's, if that's their rules, that's their rules. And the club grew too quick on it that we never had an infrastructure off it, if you like. And it, it became too big for us to go back, if you, so we couldn't go back. But that season in the Cymru South would be probably one of the best my best experiences in football. Getting to the cup final against Connors Key, a televised cup final, played at Newtown for a, for a bunch of local lads who set up a set up a, a team just to have a knock around on a Saturday in the Cardiff Combination League to represent, you know, we were one, one win away from potentially representing w- Welsh Premier in Europe or in a Scottish Cup or something, you know, and I joked with the FA that they'd have to help us financially because we couldn't afford the coach to Scotland. It was, it was really, one, you know, to do that is just, and to do it with mates, people I've grown up with since I was in nappies, was and my brother, and it was just a, it makes me feel proud just talking about it, to be honest. Yeah, that, that's incredible, though, that you would have reached the, the final, it was the, the Nathaniel Cup, it was like the, the Welsh League Cup right. final, and if, yeah. if you'd won that, you'd have gone into the... The competition is held in Scotland, isn't it? But the the teams that like con- a conference team goes in it is uh, teams from Ireland, so it would have been like a you know a, a pretty serious competition considering the, the the level that you're at. 
One hundred percent. Yeah, we would. I think the year before, I think didn't Connors Key or TNS beat Kilmarnock or some a, well, a Scottish Premier team in it or something like that. So you know, was we we could have drawn drawn a, a Welsh a Scottish Premier club, you know, an Irish Premier club, and a, and a, and a, a team from the you know the football conference. And there we are, this club that don't even have a ground. We didn't even have our own ground. Yeah, it's it's crazy to to think about that, but unfortunately, it, it wasn't to be. You you lost to, to Connors Key. Yeah, that was the season they were the, the champions as well, was wasn't it? So worthy winners on the day, but um, we didn't we didn't disgrace ourselves. We lost three 0 and I remember Andy Morrison, who was their manager, he came in the dressing room afterwards and said, He's, he, "All the boys were we were even dejective after that. You know, we're all down in the dumps. That's 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 the mentality we created." But he came in and said, "The biggest compliment I could give you is I would love to manage your team." You know, and and the boys sort of, after he went, I said, lads, that's like, he he played professional football for Man City and he's just given you the biggest compliment he could probably give you. Take a, you know, and and to be fair, he bought us all a beer in the pub as well, in the clubhouse at Newtown. So he, I I thought, I thought, to be fair, they showed it, they they had a touch of class about him that year, Connors Key. There was no rubbing their noses in in it. There was no telling us they were going to hammer us, etc., etc. There was... They were very, very respectful, which made for a good day. And we took a coach, we took 60, 70 people up there, which was massive for us, you know. Um, fantastic day for the club. I remember standing next to Nigel, and he'd started it from the beginning. And I said, God, you should be proud, Nigel. And I, I can remember, yeah, he almost had a tear in his eye, you know, and he was like, you know, and, and we both said, how the hell do we top this? <laughs> you know, um, it all sort of went a bit... South after that, and you know, we and I said we did finish fourth that you know fourth, and I really believe I do believe, had we not got to that cup final, we would have won that league that year. That cup final was a massive distraction for us in a nice way. Yeah, it, it, I suppose it just goes to the show. Uh, d- does that say anything about the, the standard of? of Welsh football through the various leagues, considering you, I know you said some of the players changed over the, the years, but if it was the, the core that was there from from when you first joined and you'd gone all the way through the leagues and yet you finished fourth in the, in the second tier of, you know, of, of Welsh football. I mean, what what would you say that says about the, the standard as a whole? Um, the standard, I believe, is not what it was 15 years ago. I don't think it is. I think um, facilities are far better. I think I think the FAW taking over the running of that league will make that league stronger. The danger is it leaves all the other leagues, the Ardent League, so far behind, and the gulf becomes, you know, too big. You've seen Pontypridd get promoted this yep. year from the south to the to the Premier, which is great because it shows that the pathway works. You know, you know, and then you've got clubs like Tafswell who for three years finished in the bottom three, but stayed up on ground criteria. How can that be right? You know, no one should, no one should be demoted or promote, you know, kept up because you've got better ground criteria than anyone else. That's, that's ludicrous. But I accept that they, they can't do that overnight, the FAW, can they? It's, it's a lot of money and, you know, you're talking floodlights and things like that. And Tashwell got fantastic facilities and deserve to be in that league with the facilities and, and, you know, now you look at you look at other teams that have gone up. Um, who's gone up this year? So Abergavenny have gone up this year. You know, their facilities are okay. They're not great. I don't I don't think they're great, um, but they've gone up. So it, for me, it's important that it, to show to teams the pathway works. That it's not a closed shop. So, but I do fear that the Cymru South and Cymru Premier will go so far right that the Ardell and underneath will be very hard to catch up that that's what i think and the fw got to be really careful about that and you know i i think from what i've seen i managed dennis powers this year in the ardo league and you look you look at the amount of money teams are paying players now as well in the company south you know we're talking about like weekly wages we're talking about like 50 60 quid for your petrol at dennis powers i was at an stm we didn't pay anyone a penny so just the, the golf in that, and I just think the FAW have got to be a bit careful. But they've done all right this year because they shows they've showed the pathway works through promotion and relegation, and that's all clubs want is a fair crack. So what was 
ultimately the decision then for STM to to close? Because again, there was the issue with the, the the tier two license. Was it the same issues then? Listen, I, we first of all, I, what I'd like to say is no sour grapes on my part. We are responsible for our football club, and our football club didn't meet the ground criteria. And the ground criteria was told to us, and we just physically couldn't do it because we didn't own our ground. We tried to ground share, we were let down a couple of times on that. And the other option, we was going to get relegated two or three leagues. Well, we, we'd have lost all our players. We were already losing players that had been with us 10 years that deserved to go on and have a crack, like Ben, ben Arman, Josh Graham, they, uh, Marcus Jones, Joey, Joey Evans. They all went on to play Cymru South or Welsh Premier, and they deserved that. They'd been loyal to us. They deserved that. You know, my brother, uh, Chrissy Worsley, people like that who'd... Never, all they ever knew was STM Sports. They deserved that opportunity in their late 20s, 30s to go and have a crack at, 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 a, at, at a higher level and earn some money. And they, off, you know, they went and some of them went, some of them stayed. And it wasn't the players. In the end, it was down to the fact that I, me and Nigel, we couldn't go back three, four divisions without the promise of a ground to make our own. Because otherwise, we're just going to go, go back, recruit some players, potentially go back to the leagues, and end up in the same boat. So, what was the, we we did, we just took the decision that, and we listen. We don't blame anyone for that decision. That's that was our decision. I'm I'm big on taking responsibility, and we as a club off the field couldn't get it right to match what was going on on the field. It wasn't for the lack of trying, but yeah, it was. Strange situation. You, you're sort of wishing your, these players to go on and have great careers and earn some money, but at the same time, it's bittersweet because you know what's coming. <laughs> um, yeah, that was that was that was a that was a dark day. We had to do that, but listen, we can all hold our heads up high that that'll never ever ever be done again in my lifetime. But you're, you're left with some fantastic memories there, as, as you say. There's oh, some huge absolutely. achievements along the way to to have gone through the divisions like like you did, playing in the cup final. You know, you you can never have that taken away from you no and those lads like local lads they've played in cup finals they've had more promotions than players that have been playing twice as long you know so that no one can take away that day at Connors Key that even that cup run you know beating Newtown away on a Wednesday night up there um, beating Aberystwyth in the semi-final with two three hundred locals watching down at Lanramie Uni that was a spe that was a special day you know, seeing the smiles on the kids' faces and putting putting something positive, a positive message at, back for St. Bellens that it does get a lot of bad press, but actually it's a really, really nice, close-knit community and with nice people there. And I know it, look, bad things happen everywhere, don't they? But I, I, I got nothing but fond memories of St. Mellons and Trowbridge uh, growing up and then, like, you know, people always very... I don't live there now, but people... Whenever I went back, people were always very polite, kind. You know, how you getting on? How's your family? I, I, you know, I, I, I'm really proud of that area because that day against Aberystwyth, I had to play 40 minutes as well. I still, my hips are still hurting now. Um, was fantastic just to see that those players earn the right to to have that day. You know and. It was, it was just fantastic. Like you say, fantastic memories no one can ever take away from us. And we talk about it now as friends and, you know, and remember, remember the Aberystwyth game, remember the, you know, remember the promotions, remember beating beating Triaris up at Fock Roo to get promoted to the Cymru South and things like that. It was, yeah, the great memories, great memories. Yeah, you'd be talking about that forever, I think. So, yeah, so for, yeah. you, for yourself then, what's next for you? Um, is it right now that you're uh, managing teams now? Yeah, so I managed Dennis Powers last year. Um, I, I finished now, um, so I'm not. I'm not going to do it next year. Uh, to, I, I run my own business. I have t obviously two kids, one that's still heavily involved in sport. Um, but I did. I've got my UA for B license, so I, I'd like to. Co I think I'd like to coach in an academy and improve kids. I think I'd like to go down that route. If I'm being honest, David, I don't think. I don't see my future totally in adults football um, unless something amazing jumps out the woodwork, which there's no reason why it should. Um, but yeah, I, I'd like to go down that route of, I think I, I think I could pass on my experiences, if nothing else, to these kids. I've, I've lived, I've lived there 
their path, haven't I? You know, it's, I've been in their shoes. I've been in it as a parent as well. And there's no UEFA license or college course that's going to give you give you that, is there? So I'd, I'd like to pass that on. Um, but I'm pretty open-minded at the same time. Pretty relaxed about it. Going to enjoy the summer of not having to WhatsApp players to turn up training and all this stuff. So um, we'll see what happens from that point of view. But I'm pretty relaxed. Yeah, well, I, I think any team would be fortunate to have you uh, you know in, involved there given you've got about 30 years of playing experience um playing professionally taking the stm sports through all the the welsh divisions and playing in the the, the big cup finals and uh, and things like that so i'm sure you you know you've got a wealth of experience that that, that you're able to pass on so i i really hope that you you know you do get that um that, that type of move at, at some point. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure um, I want to take the opportunity to you know to really thank you for joining me uh, on the episode today. It, it's been fantastic being able to to, to speak to you one to one. You know, after you know twenty five years of of writing that uh, that match report initially. So thank you so much for uh, for joining me on the episode today. It's it's, it's been great, and I, I've loved. Um, you know, finding out what you've been up to um, in all those years that, that have followed. So, so thank you so much for that. Now, if anybody does want to connect with you or, or find you, I know you say you're not a, a huge fan of social media, but um, if anybody does want to get in touch with you, uh, where's the, the best place for them to do that? Um, to be honest, I'm not on social. I'd like to say Facebook, Twitter or Instagram, but I'm not on any of them. <laughs> um, like I said, I'm pretty relaxed. I've got my own business now, um, Movo Insurance Brokers, which is has done really well the past seven years. So, if if people want to get in touch, they can go via movoinsurance.co.uk. On my contact details are on there. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm pretty open-minded about it, and I, I, I'll see what the future holds. It's, you know, I'm in a I'm in a, a decent place in life. Um, I'm fortunate. You know, my, my family's healthy. That's the main thing. And like I say, just relaxed about it. Okay, perfect. Well, if uh, I'll put the link uh, to that in the uh, in the show notes as well. So if anybody does want to reach out, then they, they've got the, the means to do so. So, um, yeah, I think we, we can wrap things up there. Thank you so much for, for yeah. joining me on the show today. It's, it's well, been, it's, it's been fantastic uh, chatting with you. And uh, perhaps we'll have the opportunity to, to do it again sometime. Thank you very much, David. I really appreciate it. If you enjoy Engage, please show your support at engagersclub.com and check out more episodes at engageshow.com. Also, if you have a spare moment, please rate and review the show. Stay engaged.